Disney's wish could have been so much more. This 100th year celebration movie just felt more like a piece of homework that the studio had to make rather than a passion project. Which is sad. Its early ideas and artwork from the concept art looked incredibly promising and fun, with ideas that could turn the movie into a memorable classic. But instead, the directing team decided to turn it into a boring and predictable movie with bland design choices that is probably making Walt Disney screech in his grave. So today, I'm gonna draw and bring to life some of those fun and interesting concept ideas that never even had the chance of seeing the light of day. But before we do that, make sure you like and subscribe. Just a quick warning, I'm not a professional artist by any means, I'm just doing this for fun. Also, sorry for being a little late to the party. I know this movie have been out for a little while, but I thought it would still be fun to draw some of the characters that were in the concept art and didn't made out into the final product, unfortunately. And we are gonna start with Star. In the movie, Star is this little glowing alien ball and it helps our main character, Asha, defeat the king. Its main role is mainly to be cute and to, yeah, be cute, I guess that's it. And to be merchable, make a lot of money to Disney, I guess. But aside from that, Star in the movie is nothing more than just a cute little thing that does those little cute things to make you laugh. Which in contrast with the original idea from the concept art, Star was supposed to be a boy, a magical boy. Now, while the ball is fine, I think it's a little soulless, you know what I mean? It's funny, but there's no emotion to it, no story. Other than do silly things, it has no purpose. Star just appears out of nowhere and it's just there. Which I think is a waste. If they had decided to make Star a boy and gave him a proper story, like motivations. Why is he helping Asha, the main character? How does he feel about having to help her just because he's a star? in the sky. Does he have a family? You know, there's a lot of questions that you could answer better if he was a boy. Not that you couldn't, if it was just this little ball. But either way, it would change the whole dynamics between Star and Asha. I think he could still be doing those cute little things that Star Ball does. You know, he could be energetic and do funny magic stuff while still having his own character arc. The main thing with this movie is that every character is just so flat. Everyone just feels two-dimensional. And this star that we got is the same thing. It's a cute ball that sometimes make you laugh and that's it. So why didn't the writers decide to make Star a boy? Well, apparently, according to the Wish concept art book that they made, Star was originally inspired by Peter Pan. So I suppose his relationship with Asha would kind of be like Peter Pan and Wendy, which I think would have been pretty cute. Maybe sprinkle a little romance in there. I think it would have been pretty fun. You know, a magical boy and a normal girl. But I think it would have been fun to have something more there, other than just be funny and help the main character. Also, apparently the problem with making Star a boy, according to the writers, is that his role looked a little too much like Genie from Aladdin, which I think is weird. Yeah, maybe they're both magical and grant wishes. Even if Genie and Star had pretty much the same role, I think what would make the main difference is their story, their character arc, their motivations, their personality, and how they interact with the main character. I think Genie and Aladdin had a completely different relationship than I think Star and Asha would have. So it doesn't really make sense to me because you could just make two different characters, even though they have the same role, just by giving them different background stories, motivations, personality. And I really think it's a shame that they didn't adopt this design because I think it's extremely unique and very different from Genie too. He has glowing hair, a, a cape that leaves this sparkle glitter trail. I think it looks adorable. At some point he was supposed to be a shapeshifter too. I think also it would have been much fun if Star could help Asha in some other way rather than her objective wish. We'll talk about Asha later, but she too is very two-dimensional. I like her, she's likable. Yeah, she does some cringy stuff 
sometimes, but it's not too bad. But she doesn't have a character arc. She doesn't have flaws. She says herself in the movie, her biggest flaw is that she cares too much. That's not a flaw. That kind of makes her sound like a Mary Sue, other than anything. It's like, I'm too perfect. I don't have anything to fix. And I just want to help people. I think she could have some character flaw that Star would help her overcome, but I'm too bad we didn't get that. They had a lot of design choices for Star. I think these three are my favorite. He looks ethereal, ethereal. He looks fun. He looks really cool. And I would have loved to see him in a movie interacting with Asha. Maybe add some story to him about how another human impacted him with their wish or I don't know, anything. Just give him personality. So yeah, I incorporated this image here of Star, which I think is the most magical and fun looking one. He has a darker skin, a hair that glows in the dark, a magical cape, and uh, yeah, I think it was a pretty unique and fun design and he's probably the character that I'm um, the most upset about um, not existing in the movie. But this next one is Queen Amalia. Amala? Sorry, she's a little bland. She's also just there to help the plot. She, I don't know, her actions doesn't really make sense to me. So she's married to the king Magnifico, which is supposed to be the villain of the story, which is also doesn't make sense why he's the villain. He's the king of the city of roses that grants wishes. He has the sorcery and the magical ability to grant wishes. So everyone in the town gives him their wishes and about once a month, maybe if we're lucky, he grants two wishes in a single month but mostly just one. And apparently that's the problem. He's very selective of the wishes that he grants and a lot of the wishes, most of the wishes, won't ever be granted. They won't ever come true. So that makes him the villain. So just a reminder, nobody, nobody was forced to give him their wishes. I think it's common sense that if there's this many people in town, you wouldn't just throw your life's dream at someone that is probably never going to grant it. It would kind of be like trying to win a lottery. The chances would be so low that it would have been so much easier to just try to do it yourself, achieve it yourself. And also, in a way, it makes people seem lazy, you know? They want to give their wishes to the king to grant instead of them doing the work. So in a way, it feels like the people are using the king to get their wishes granted without them doing anything. And that's supposed to be the villain, because he doesn't grant everybody's wishes. And yeah, I, I get Ash's point of, so if you're not gonna grant it, why don't you give it back? And that makes sense on her part, but doesn't make sense to me why does the king holds those wishes in a locked castle. Anyways, a lot of things doesn't make sense in this movie, but apparently, originally, the king and queen were supposed to be evil. And I suppose with a better villain backstory and villain reasons to be evil, other than just not doing what everybody wanted, that's bland. I know the theme they wanted to create was around wishes and everything, but I think that as a hundredth year celebration, it would have been better to just make a movie that's good, other than just tied to a theme that is probably gonna restrict you and not give you a lot of freedom to make a proper movie. The only villain couple that I can think of right now is Hawk Moth and his assistant. They're not really a couple, but they kind of act like it. I think it's a pretty cool idea that is not explored enough and could have been actually fun. I guess they made the queen good because if they were both evil, who would rule over the kingdom if both of them had to go to the dungeon. I guess Asha, which is an interesting idea of her becoming queen or princess. She would become a Disney princess. I think that would have been really nice. And that's an idea that I've explored with Asha. But anyway, I just think it would have been nice if they had a story. Like the only background story we get for the villain is that King Magnifico had a tough childhood and he built this kingdom so that everybody can be happy. Is that even a villain backstory, by, by the way? Now that I'm telling it, like, what's the point? He's not even a villain. He sings in his song that he would let people live in his kingdom for free if they need it. Like, sure, pure evil. But what if both of them were evil? The only reason I thought of binding both of them together would be if they had a child and that child died and the king has the power to bring the child back with sorcery. So they both become paranoid and grow more insane and at some point they would be willing to destroy the whole kingdom if that meant 
they had their child back. I don't know, not too original, but it's the only way I thought of being a villain couple at the top of my head. Let me know if you have a, a better story in the comments. But anyways, let's say they actually had a villain motive to act like a proper villain. Let's now go over to our main character, Asha. She's a little too perfect, let's say. Yeah, uh, she's kind of clumsy, but that's not exactly an imperfection. I would say an imperfection is something, maybe a weakness that you need or have to overcome in order to achieve what you want. So being a little clumsy doesn't get in the way of, let's say, Asha's goal was to become a sorcerer. And I know in the movie the king doesn't allow that, but let's say she's his apprentice and he only allows his apprentice to use magic. Anyway, so let's say her goal is to be the best sorcerer beside the king. Being a little clumsy doesn't really get in the way of that, but she needs a character flaw. Like maybe it's a childhood trauma she holds, or maybe she's a little too stubborn, or is still afraid to try something harder and step out of her comfort zone. Like those are actually flaws that would step in the way of her getting to her goal, but being a little clumsy no, she doesn't have any flaws. She has a goal and she gets that goal. That's it. She doesn't have to overcome anything and what she thinks she wants is what she gets. So let's say Shrek. His goal was to be left alone. He wanted to be in his solitary swamp for the rest of his life. But that's not what he actually needs. He needs companionship, friendship. And in the end, he doesn't get what he originally thought he wanted, but he's happier than ever. Yeah, Shrek it's all that meme and stuff, but he actually had a character arc. He had a goal, didn't get what he wanted, had to overcome a lot of things, and is actually happy in the end. Shrek had a better character arc than Asha. So you may be seeing the speed paint and be like, so why are you drawing Asha in a princess dress? So I thought of after the villain couple do their villainous things because they're actual villains and Asha and Starboy defeats them, there will be no one to rule over the kingdom. So she rules over Roses as a queen or princess alongside Starboy. I didn't think about a goal for her, what she wants, her flaws, but I think whatever she had as a flaw, she would have been able to overcome together with Starboy. That would have been so nice nice to see. But we got this movie instead, which is fine, I watched it, I it wasn't the best thing ever and it wasn't the worst thing ever too, it was just okay. But honestly, from the concept art to everything, this movie could have been just so much more. The queen is just there to help the main character to get to her goal, she's kind of like a prop. She doesn't have her own story, she doesn't have her own goal, she's just there to help. And that's it. Boring. Come on, Disney. Shrek did better. Overall, Star did come out pretty cute, but I would have loved to see him as a boy interact with Asha and together overcome their own fears and flaws and develop in their own ways. Well, it's a shame we didn't get that. Um, maybe in the next true 100th year celebration, I guess. Better luck next time. But anyways, my wish is for you to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.